In 2023, does anyone even care about double action semi-autos? What if you want a red dot sight on them? Welcome back to the Humble Marksman Channel, the only gun channel on the internet dripping with that BDE. That's right, Big Dad Energy. My wife really hates it when I sing along with the radio. She told me to stop singing Wonderwall. And I said, maybe. Sound off in the comments with your favorite dad joke and I just might feature it on the channel. I'm David and I have a soft spot for double action, single action guns. But I also like using red dot sights. And then in the year 2023, that's a combination that is kind of tough to get at. It makes me wonder like, does anybody even really care about double action guns anymore? I obviously do but I know I'm in kind of a shrinking minority. So that's why I was curious to see like, well, if I want a double action, single action gun with a red dot sight, what are my options in 2023? This all started when I picked up the six hour P226 Legion a while back. I had the Beretta M9A4 from a couple years ago when they released it because I was excited at the prospect of an optics ready Beretta. And more recently, as I started thinking about this, I kind of got into the A-Rex um, Zero One Tactical, which comes with the co-witness sights and the threaded barrel straight from the box from the factory. So going through the options that I have, just hammering on the price points, the Sig Sauer P226 Legion is the most expensive gun on the table. They're selling for about $1,300. They don't come with co-witness iron sights. These are low profile sights meant to be used without an optic. However, the slide is cut with the Sig cut, which basically has the screw holes for the RMR or the Delta Point Pro and no recoil lugs. Moving on to the Beretta, the Beretta M9A4 is kind of the dressed up version of the aluminum frame 92. I realized that the 92 LTT RDO is a thing, but that's kind of like a custom shop gun. Like those would get breathed on by Ernest Langdon. They're not just straight from the factory. Now it comes from the factory with the ability to accept a sight mount in front of the rear sights. This is one of the D-Law plates that is the lower profile plates that kind of sinks the optic down. It's almost as low as that LTT option, but not quite. It has this gorgeous anodized frame and sort of the Cerakote Brown slide and barrel. It is a pretty, pretty gun. Price point on these in 2023 is somewhere between about $900 and about $1,100. It looks like all the $900 ones are out of stock everywhere and the ones that are in stock are selling for closer to $1,100. And finally, rounding out the pack is the A-Rex Zero One Tactical. This is actually a compact. The other two guns are full size. So this gun is a a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter than its peers, but even the full size version is still lighter. Those two other guns are both 33 ounces unloaded. This one is only 30 ounce and it's full size. As you see it here, it's a 28 ounce gun. It's the only option that actually comes with the co-witness sights that are usable. The optic system is a plate system. It comes with four plates that you can mount it on. I've got the Hollow Sun EPS mounted on it right now. And it comes with a threaded barrel for whatever you use your threaded barrels for. It's very much kind of a clone of the 226, but it's different in the way that the uh, decocker actually is you know, a short throw, but it also works as a slide stop and it can work as a manual safety. So the action is a little bit uh, more complex. This is the least expensive gun on the table at $870 full price, although they go on sale from time to time and you can get them for less than that if you look around. So we're gonna go through sort of the ergonomics of the pistols, the triggers. We're gonna get them on the range where we evaluate kind of the shooting characteristics of the guns. And there's objective data there to actually crown winners and losers and then we'll kind of get you guys out of here. So let's talk about the ergonomics. Uh, the 226 has, in my opinion, the best ergonomics of any production pistol on the market. The way it sinks into my hand, it's like it was made for it. It just feels really, really nice. The Legion particularly got the decocker kind of shrunk down and sort of out of the way so that you don't accidentally hit the decocker and the slide stop similarly is so small and out of the way. This is the one kind of downside to this pistol is that hitting the slide release takes a little bit of learning because it's, it's not where you intuitively would want it. That's where the decocker lives. The trigger reach and profile on the 226 is probably the easiest to manage the reach on anyway. Uh, if you've got smaller hands, all of these guns are gonna favor people with sort of larger hands, at least on the double action stroke. But the profile of the trigger is such that when you get it into single action, it is very easy, very comfortable. Trigger face is very rounded. It's not like a broad across the face sort of trigger. It's very round in its profile moving to the back. There's great checkering on the front strap of the pistol and the grips are super, super grippy. It absolutely stays planted when you go shooting. The bottom of the frame and the front of the frame are knurled with traction to really weld your support hand to the gun. 
you can get really, really good purchase on the 226, which is why it's probably one of my favorites. Moving on to the Beretta 92. Now, 92s are sort of interesting because they have like a very tall slide, but a very short grip. Like the grip length is almost like a compact grip length. And to that point, you can see that my pinky nearly hangs off the edge of what is considered a full-size grip. Now that said, the ergonomics are quite good on the Beretta. The slide ride decockers, like you have to train your thumbs to sort of stay out of the way. If you're somebody who likes to flag their thumb real high like that, you will bash your thumb on the decocker as the slide moves around. That said, the reach on the double action is quite long, but when in single action, it becomes super duper manageable. The trigger profile face is much flatter with sort of round edges. It feels more broad, which is good in single action. It actually makes it pretty easy to get a hold of in single action. The slide release on the 92 is perfectly where you would want it. It doesn't really get in the way to where you're going to ride it. Mag release is easy to get at. The grips that it comes with, it comes with two sets of grips. It comes with grip panels, which allows you to use the 92X profile, which is the Vertec frame, or if you want the traditional 92 profile, which is what I like, then you can put these wraparound grips on, which is what you see here. So from the box, you've got some options on grips. Now the grips are plastic on this, as opposed to G10 on the 226. But that said, this is some of the nicest plastic grips I've ever seen. The traction is really, really good. It's so good that it's almost not even worth, you know, making a change. It's they're really great grips. On the slide is the decocker. You can kind of get at it with your strong hand thumb maybe, but it springs back in place. It doesn't function as a safety like the other 92 pistols. Finally, the A-Rex is very much a clone of the 226. There is a little bit more of a hump sort of right there when you come around the pistol, which kind of throws your thumb out broader. So it, similar to the 226, has a nice broad backstrap. This is actually broader, the A-Rex is, which spreads out the recoil sort of nicely. Trigger pull reach is, is very much kind of like the Beretta with a very broad trigger face with just very slightly eased edges. So the trigger pull feels really, really long, but in single action mode, that kind of hooked recurve trigger that you see there is easy to get a hold of and very easy to pull straight to the rear. The decocker slide stop combo works great as a decocker. It doesn't really work to release the slide, at least in my model. Like I have to completely violate my grip. Like I can't get it to drop you're gonna probably need to be releasing this via slingshot and not using it as a slide release. The manual safety is set up very nicely so that you can deactivate it on either side and it's very difficult to accidentally activate with just the side of your thumb. Now the grip panels on this are hardened plastic and they don't provide great traction, specifically sort of up here, which is where the grip makes uh, contact with the frame and really kind of resists the rotation of the gun. Since these are high bore axis guns all, having great traction is important because the guns are gonna wanna rotate a lot just based on bore axis, it's just basic physics. But that said, it's not necessarily a bad thing. So let's talk about triggers and we'll go back to the top with the 226. The 226 has the nicest trigger out of the box as it should, it's the most expensive gun. Double action pull weight on this example is about 10 pounds. The single action pull is about four and a half pounds. The reset on it is absolutely ridiculously short. Like if you look at it, there it is, that's all it is. This is the easiest trigger to run fast because it has the least amount of trigger travel. The quality of the double action pull is quite good. It's very smooth, very linear. There's no stacking or staging that really goes on through the double action. There maybe is a slight hitch halfway if you pull the trigger slow, but it's a very high quality double action trigger. This one will probably impress your friends at the safe area or the gun store counter the most of the pistols on display. Moving on to the M9A4, this is kind of the beginning of the new Beretta double action triggers. Uh, they're quite good. There's a slight hitch in it sort of, sort of right there where if you like to stage your double action pull, there's a nice spot right there where you can do it. Not a problem, right before the release. So. If you like to stage your double action pull versus just rowing straight through it, this has a very good trigger for staging double action. The trigger pull weight on double action is just under 10 pounds. It's about nine and a half pounds on this particular model. Single action is typical for Beretta with a lot of take up based on defeating the firing pin block in the single action mode. And then once you're on the wall, it's super duper crisp, very firm wall. And then just a slight amount of over travel the reset is pretty short, not quite as short as the SIG, but still very, very good. Quality on this trigger is very strong out of the box. It's not quite as good as the LTT Berettas, but also it's so close to it that I don't know that I would mess with it. It's an absolutely fantastic trigger. The trigger pull on the A-Rex is, I mean, this, this pistol is designed specifically for duty if you read about it on their website, and I would say that's kind of how the trigger comes across. 
The trigger pull is very heavy. It's 12 pounds plus. Uh, my trigger scale maxes out at 12, so I don't know how heavy double action is. It's the least polished and refined. I suspect as the pistol continues to wear in, double action will continue to smooth up, but because the ergonomics of the frame are so good, you're able to stabilize the gun really well through double action. Single action on this is about five and a half pounds. It's got a fair amount of take up before getting to the wall. The wall is pretty, I won't call it, it's not as firm as the Beretta, but it's still pretty firm. Reset is the longest of the pistols on the table. It's not bad, like don't hear me say that. These other two pistols cost, you know, between 200 to $500 more than this pistol, depending on what you pay. So it's expected to have kind of the least refined trigger and it does. So let's get on to shooting impressions. First, I just started by warming up with the pistols, just shooting just a standard kind of array, kind of as fast as I could see my sight sort of thing. And wouldn't you know it, the full size pistols with the really grippy grips felt the best. Now, all of these, as I mentioned, are high bore axis guns, which means they introduce a lot of rotation, at least the 226 and the A-Rex do. Because the bore axis is so high, your point of leverage is so low comparatively, they're gonna to wanna to rotate in recoil. But because the ergonomics are so good, the return to zero is fantastic. The guns are very stable, especially with really aggressive grips. So the guns are quite shootable. And because the backs of the grips are so broad, and this is true across all of these, they spread out the force of recoil across your palm so well that they're just very pleasant to shoot. Weighing about 33 ounces, these guns, they're easy to point at targets. They're, they're good middleweight guns. Like that's part of the reason why I really like these aluminum double action guns is because a middleweight gun is kind of a magical weight point to be. They're light enough to carry, but they're heavy enough to where, you know, refining a sight picture to aim at difficult shots becomes a little bit easier. They're just really nice guns to shoot. I definitely had the best luck stabilizing the Beretta and the 226 based on their longer grips. I just felt more secure in my purchase on the frames, but more importantly is the grip texture was such that it is. Predictably, the A-Rex with its lighter weight slide had sort of the jumpier profile in recoil, but you know, it returned to zero like a boss too, just based on the fact that you can get a really, really good grip on the pistol based on just the frame's geometry. So while this gun was a little bit more difficult to control, I still was able to shoot it at roughly the same pace as the big boys. And here comes the objective piece of it. So, I mean, how good are these triggers really? How good are the frames? Well, we solved that using B8 targets and sending them out to 15 yards. Now, I evaluated each trigger with five shot groups. I only got one try with each gun at 15 yards shooting offhand. And the offhand is important because I'm not judging the mechanical accuracy of the gun. All of these guns are gonna be lights out accurate if shot from a bench. I wanted to see is how good the combination of the frame and trigger are how well I could stabilize these, so I shot for points on a B8. As far as scoring is concerned, the points are just awarded based off the ring on the target that you hit, and tie is broken by number of X count. And if X count is the same, then it's a subjective call of who has better central tendency. Starting a double action at 15 yards. Coming in in third place with a score of 44 was the A-Rex. Now I only fired four shots with the A-Rex, so I'm just kind of predicting that the other shot based on the other ones would have landed a score of 44. I'll learn to math better, I promise. I think that's five. <laughs> Let's see. All right, and in second place with a score of also 44 is the 226. Now, I was able to shoot two tins with this, and I had a seven just barely, so that's more better central tendency, so it gets second place. And coming in first in double action is the Beretta with a score of 47. That's two tins and three nines, zero X. And with single action, the scores were very, very similar, which is why X count matters. So coming in third place with a score of 49, four X, was the 226. That's nearly a perfect score, not quite, but nearly. Coming in second place with a score of four tins and one X is the A-Rex. And again, top of the heap in single action is the Beretta with the almost perfect score of 50 with four X, which is quite good. I'll be honest, I did not expect the Beretta to place as well as it did. I thought I got along with the SIG trigger better, but clearly I shoot better with the Beretta in this limited exercise. So I backed it up to 25 yards to see if the differences in the guns and the frames were really gonna manifest in a meaningfully different way. Same drill, BA targets, and wouldn't you know it, the skill of the operator appears to come through more than the differences in the gun. So coming in third place with a score of 45 0X, is the A-Rex. Second place with a score of 45 1X is the 226. And edging out victory at 25 yards with a score of 46 and 2X is the Beretta M9A4. And now why this is really interesting to me 
is this is an old Hollow 7 407 CO, which is supposed to be an 8 MOA circle, but it reads much bigger. And I had the best central tendency on the groups at 25 yards with the biggest reticle on the page. One more category before getting into kind of final thoughts and performance and all that kind of stuff is gonna be sort of the fit, finish, and feel of a gun, like which one is going to deliver sort of that soul, the you know artisan sort of feel. And let's talk about that. I mean, obviously the 226, which is the most expensive gun on the table, it just feels like the highest quality of the guns, not by a lot, but a little. It just has more of the finer appointments with the checkering on the front strap and the trigger guards. It's kind of got this cool gray green sort of color. It just, you know, it feels like the most expensive gun on the table because it is. That said, the Beretta M9A4 isn't far off from that. The, you know, plastic grip panels sort of degrade sort of the, you know, quality experience, but sort of the two-tone sort of tan and brown controls is kind of cool. And it just kind of feels nice. The checkering on the front strap isn't done quite as well. So it just doesn't feel quite as high quality. There's a little bit more slide to frame slop on that. It doesn't, that doesn't matter guys. These guns are super accurate. What's interesting about the Beretta is because it has this fixed barrel, it has a locking block style barrel so the barrel doesn't lift and recoil. And because it has this drop top slide, when I was shooting it fast, um, it doesn't lift as much as the 226, like not like observably less. There's observably less sight lift versus the other two guns because of how the slide is shaped and the fact that the barrel doesn't lift. So it's really cool in its own right. It feels like a super high-end gun, like, you know, this could be an heirloom as well. Now, this is the duty grade gun on the table and like there's more rattle in the slide on frame. Uh, it is designed as a duty gun. So, I mean, that's, that's what it is. This is not like a super pride piece, but that said, if you handle one of these guns, Guns, it's gonna feel nicer than you know a polymer gun as well so it still feels cool it still has kind of that metal gun sole it feels really nice it's just it's not uh it doesn't have kind of the refinements as the other one it just has lines on sort of the front strap it doesn't have the check ring it does have knurling on the front of the trigger guard but the bottom side is smooth the trigger being a little bit heavier it just doesn't feel as kind of worked on and special sort of out of the box but as you would imagine you know it's still a pretty sweet gun, uh, very happy to have it in the collection. So final thoughts, these are just the three options that I could find that are double action guns that you can carry in 2023. So I think they're all great, they're really cool guns. I would not hesitate, well, I mean, I say this in other videos, but there's not like a hardware difference between these guns. While I was a little bit more accurate with the Beretta, like the points were this close together to where like in a practical context for like concealed carry or home defense, there really wouldn't have been that much of a difference. Like the accuracy was about the same, the trigger speed is about the same, uh, everything's kind of about the same and I'm the limiting factor. So any of these guns would be a fantastic tool in 2023 for me. So I wouldn't feel bad about putting a light on this and using it as home defense gun in the same way that, you know, I wouldn't feel bad about carrying this or even this. I'm just glad that we still have, these are like the manual transmissions of, of pistols basically. And like manual transmissions are going away and double action single action guns also seem to be going away. So. Sound off in the comments. What would you like to see? As always, I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.